Okay, this week we're going to do oil. There's so much to do about oil. It's crazy how much you want you to know about oil. So we're going to talk about oil. And well, before we start writing, yeah, we can do that. Okay, oil. 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 Uh, we have the functions of oil. Functions. Well, what does the oil do? It has a lot of things. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Oh, my goodness. What do you got here? Help me out. Lubrication. All right. Number one answer. Lubrication and anti-wear. Not underwear. Anti -wear. <coughs> what else? Cooling. Hmm, functions of oil. Oh, absolutely. I'm just looking at some of the things that I wrote down here, and it's like functions of oil. It's like functions it should be and properties. Because there's some things in here. It's not a function. It's just a property. Um, <clears throat> so. Well, it's property and it's viscous. Viscous. Okay. <clears throat> Maintain. Proper viscosity. All right, we're getting them. What else? Scavengers. Scavengers. What do you mean by scavengers? Well, it, it cleans and scavenges from Cleaning. The oil. Yeah. Well, you get them in order, too. My goodness. <coughs> Literally the order I have them written down. What else? Cushion. What? Cushion. Cushion. That should be on there. Cushion. Well, it's not on there, but that's a really good answer. It fills gaps. Fills gaps. All right, I got that one. Seals. Seals. Like ring to cylinder wall. Hydraulic tappets. What about hydraulic tappets? Pressurizing. Okay. Provide hydraulic action. Two more. It's getting harder. What does it start with? Is it a function or a property? Uh, let's see. E would be function. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Corrosion protection. Last one's a property. Break in? Like mineral? Hmm. I don't know. Thermal stability. Thermal stability. That's what I was thinking. Would it fall? Would that fall under cooling those? No, it can't. It it stays uh, stable. It stays stable. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. All right. Functions and properties. I'm going to change that. So next is functions, and properties. There. Functions and properties. Well, let's see. I wrote this down, so I might as well copy it. What is a lubricant? What is the definition? I think we all know what a lubricant is. It's what a is natural that? or artificial artificial substance having greasy or oily <laughs> properties which can be used to lubricate. How's that for an example? <laughs> Definition of lubrication when you use the word to define it. Um, which can be used to lubricate. All right, types of oils. talk about them, then I'll circle back around. I'm going to try that a little bit different this year, let me see. Okay. First we have 
Animal oil. Types of oils. Animal. So I'll write it down a little bit. You can just listen and pay attention. I'll, I'll go back and write this. Animal. Made from? Animals. Animals. Uh, tallow oil, lard oil. Uh, I'll go this. Neat's foot uh, sperm oil from? Sperm oils. Sperm oils. Um, porpoise oil from? Oh, wait a minute. So we got, wait a minute. I forgot. So we got animal. Made from animals. We have tallow oil. That's what it was. Tallow oil made from? cows. There is lard oil made from pigs. pig's fat. There's neat's foot oil, according to my notes, shin bone and feet, but not hooves of cattle. That is something that I need to question. Cows don't have feet that I'm aware of. I'm not a cattle rancher. He's, he's doing it right now. What is the foot of a cattle? That literally said that. Oh, I was thinking of what neat's foot oil. Okay. Uh, we have sperm oil from, I'm just going to say whales before anybody says anything. <coughs> uh, porpoise oil. Porpoise. From porpoise. And lastly, we would have baby oil made from babies. babies. <laughs> Probably ugly babies. The foot, the foot is the part that the hook attaches to. Oh, there is a foot. Okay. Where does the foot? It looks disgusting. We've all learned something, so everybody can go home now. All right. So types of oil we had animal. Is that an ankle? Animal. Oh, I don't think we need to go through all of that because it's just kind of for fun. Tallow oil, lard oil, neat's foot oil, sperm. Why do they call it the sperm whale? Because they thought all of it was sperm stored in the head. Yeah, pretty much. Or it's what it looked like. Yeah. Um, baby oil, by the way, is made of mineral oil. I just threw that in there to be stupid. Um, so animal. We had all those different types. Imagine how efficient it would be if it was made from babies. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, oops. Animal. Well, that's uh, made. Made. We'll do this. Made uh, from animals. Anybody who says a baby's not an animal doesn't have any because they're well, animals cannot be cannot be used for internal combustion engines. Engines because they produce fatty acids. at high temperatures. And it has a lower coefficient of friction than mineral oils. That means it's not as slippery. So like it's zero to one coefficient, or do you not know? I don't know. I was wondering if I had a vegetable in the next one. I really should. So animal, next one is vegetable. That is made from? Olives. Fruits. Made from plants. What do we got? Castor oil from castor beans. Olive oil from olives. Rapeseed oil from rapeseeds. And cottonseed oil. They call it canola oil now, right? So it I was wondering, because it's offensive to have to say that. I always kind of feel like I'm you know, high bell. You say, you say, oh, canola oil from rapeseed. <laughs> Um, all right, so what is wrong with this? Uh, it uh, oxidizes. Where, where do you get virgin olive oil? What's virgin olive oil? First press. Huh? First press. Oh, that's not what I thought. Sorry, you're talking to Italian. It comes from I can't eyes. pretend like I don't know that. <laughs> uh, it will oxidize when exposed to air and cause gummy conditions in the engine. Exposed to air. 
and cause gummy conditions. in the engine. Sorry vegans, can't use your plants to run our engines. I think that was an issue during World War II, was that they were vegans? Yeah, some people, yeah, <laughs> some people were trying to use castor oil in their engines. It was used, we talked about that, in the, in the gnome rotary, and it made you oh, in the gnome. Okay. get the poops. <laughs> <laughs> so that would cause steel to wear rapidly, which is a bad thing. Wear out. All right, since it's my class and I, you know, I get to talk about whatever I want to. Uh, speaking of, you know, vegans and people, um, I probably shouldn't go this way. <laughs> I, I, I am not much of a, uh, uh, what, what, a global warming kind of a guy because I was literally terrified as a child because all people talk about is the upcoming ice age. And I never thought I would live to be this old because of the ice age. So to hell with them. Now it's global warming. But I'm reading this really cool book <coughs> about the, this uh, guy uh, and then going to the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. And they talk about the Great Dust Bowl, which I had never really read much about. Holy crap, was it hot. You know, they talked about 118 degrees in like North Dakota for like weeks on end. It's not that hot now, so because the ice age is coming. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, is it getting hotter or is it getting colder? Back on the cooling thing again. See? Yeah. Can we get an ice age? Lower coefficient. I'm not as worried about the ice age now that I've seen the movie Ice Age because. <laughs> Talking woolly mammoths, who doesn't? I know, I want to see the woolly mammoth. Lower he coefficient. Is. He's just Let's poofy. Honest, dude, Friction yeah. then mineral. Oh yeah, and completely off that topic, by the way, our power is going to be shut down on this side of the street on Wednesday, so we have to figure out some sort of alternate means. Either do this in the dark, everybody brings <laughs> flashlights and a red on the board, or we have to do it across the street or something. So, all right, then we have, okay, lower coefficient of mineral. Then we have, because I've mentioned it already twice. Mineral. Mineral oils. Where do mineral oils come from? Minerals. From the minerals, from, well, they say dinosaurs. I don't think there's that many dinosaurs. Primarily used in combustion engines now. Dinosaurs? The ground? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not really so much dino, it's, uh, you know, oil. Which? Petroleum. Petroleum, yeah. Petrol. Which people say dinosaurs, but I think it's more than dinosaurs. It's, it's not easy. It's not a, that's the joke. Yeah, it's uh, plant that, life and stuff like that. And I actually was listening to this guy talk about how there's actually this layer in the earth that actually contains this recurring stuff that is actually the minerals and it's like in reality we have this lifetime supply of, yeah. of so I don't Fossil know. Fossil fuels is a term coined by the Rockefeller to sell oil at a higher price to make it sound finite. There we go. Yeah, and this guy's saying it's yeah, not I finite. Too. It's like we have more oil than we could ever use in a hundred lifetimes and people think we're going to run out. Why None of us actually know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Uh, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> My wife does it. Uh, much greater, much greater chemical stability over vegetable. There was that meme going around for a while where some lady was pouring like vegetable oil, cooking oil into her engine. I don't, you know. So then sending it to her boyfriend. Hey, I got it. Don't worry about it. I, you know, car was low on oil. So, uh, didn't see it. It was funny. What about the, the new Starbucks drink where they put all oil in the Actually, what it was, I had a student in class whose girlfriend sent him that. She did it to him. She left the cap on. She's like, and so he freaked out. Oh, my gosh, you ruined my car. <clears throat> uh, can be, what's the Starbucks thing? 
Uh, they put olive oil in this like matcha drink, and then everyone was getting boops, and they were surprised <laughs> that coffee and olive oil makes you boop. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, did anybody not oh, get the poop yeah, after drinking coffee, though? I mean, I don't drink coffee. I've never had it. How would I know? Mm, All right, uh, mineral. Can be classified as solid, semi solid, or fluid. So I have the solids. So what is my solid? That's uh, some of the stuff I don't know. Mica, soapstone, graphite. What do we use graphite for? Pencils. Uh, that is true. As a lubricant, where is graphite really? Dry lubes and locks. Dry lubes and locks. Very lightweight stuff. I think that's uh, even here somewhere. Brace. We typically use it in brace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I have dry graphite. I put on the pins that slide back and forth. And watches. Uh, does not... Watches, okay. Does not dissipate heat well. And I think I have my actual words used. Mainly used in light lubrication, especially when freezing could be a problem. Like firearms, possibly, or locks. I don't know, do you use them firearms? Typically, we use, we use I'm not checking firearms, so I check with this guy because he'll argue with me. So, no! <laughs> what? Uh, no, we use uh, like lithium grease. Lithium. That might be included here, graphite. I don't know. In light lube. Um, especially when freezing is a problem. Uh, we got the solids, now we got the semi-solid. So extremely heavy oils and greases. Anybody ever mess with gear oil? Mm -hmm. yeah, that stuff really stinks so bad. It only yeah. tastes like honey. It's <laughs> thick. Uh, okay, so grease. I like this. Grease is a mixture of oil and soap. It does not smell like it. Probably... Uh, had a joke right there. What's the movie, uh, the Christmas movie? You shoot your eye out, kid. Oh, and he had that soap. What, lava, is something boy, Lava Boy, or was the soap he, he made him go blind? It was the yeah, I know Christmas story. Life, so, something boy. Blind. Yeah, but it was it was the soap. soap <clears throat> I know, but I try to remember the name of the soap. Anyway, uh, see what happens when you give me too many cookies. Um, I said thick one. Let's see, I've got, I'm not going to write this. Oil and sodium soap, gears and hot running equipment, oil and calcium soap, cup grease, oil and aluminum soap, ball bearing and high pressure. Ah, we need to get into that. Um, but this one's important. because Some spur gears. You know what a spur gear is, right? Some spur gears and hypoid gears. Hypoid Type. What's a hypoid gear? No idea. That's a great question. Next question. Please. Why don't you look that up since you have the computer? It's hypoid. I think that's, is that uh, the chevron shaped? Um, hypoid. There must be hypoid gear boxes. They're, um, oh, this is what you would see in, um, in a differential. Or so oh, in the 90s? Angle. Yeah, the it, 90s. It comes at like. The angles. It's oh, it's just a, a 90 degree drive? Big old ring with a little gear that walks across the top. They have a different double. name for it than the light coming in. Yeah, that's, I just call them 90 gear drives. All right, Google Roulette. I could get a porn or I could get. What are they? You can get a gear box or a different box. Oh, they're cur curved. See how they're all curved? Instead of straight cut? I'd call that helical, but... Yeah, I was going to say that curve, and that was a helical. That's worm. Well, they could do a reaction. 
Spiral bevels. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, the point is, some types of gears, um, having high tooth pressures, and high rubbing velocities, require the use of EP lubricants. What does EP stand for? Stream pressure. I think you see that in some other spot again. Extreme pressure. And then we get down to the fluids, which would be our basic oil. And of course, that is used as the primary lubricant in engines. Because Because it has a lot of nice features. It is easily pumped. Builds up pressure. Uh, it's easily sprayed. We have the piston cooling nozzles where it sprays. We have the connecting rod ends where it sprays. We, um, absorbs and dissipates heat. So it makes a nice coolant. Quickly. What's the largest source of heat? Friction. Largest source of heat in the engine? Friction. Nope. Huh? Combustion. So where does that, what gets hot from combustion? Right. Pistons and cylinder walls. We don't really have much oil around the heads. Uh, let's see. Oh, it should be like Roman numerals, but whatever. A um, little redundant, but somebody did say this exactly. Good cushioning effect. but I didn't write it in my initial ones. And it has good uh, chemical stability. Is good at moderately high temperatures. What happens at 300 degrees Celsius? It does not have good chemical stability at that. All right, and then lastly, lastly, we have oils, fluid, but we should mention, why does it look like that? A, primarily used as a lubricant because, because, and then for some reason, no, A, it's the right page. Oh, animal I'm trying to figure out my 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 oh, animal, vegetable, mineral, ABC, mineral, D, synthetic. What is synthetic? Not natural, so not made. Everything's natural. Not made from natural crude. You should coal, correct? I don't even know. I didn't write it down. 
it is widely used, and I think the only thing you use in turbine engines. Now, when I say turbine engines, I don't mean turbocharged piston engines, right? So it's either piston engine, recip, same thing, or turbine engine, jet, something like that. Widely, I don't think there's anything other than that. Um, it is not used in piston engines at all for, uh, for in, in aviation. Why is it not used in aviation? Well, that's a long story. You want it right now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically... They tried it. So Mobile One had All right, so we we're gonna learn a lot about oils. And the reason why is because as if you're gonna work in small aviation, anything piston driven, you're gonna get that question nonstop. What kind of oils should I use? Why do you recommend it? And you and you have to have the answer to that you're gonna look kind of foolish. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so you have to understand the oils. You've got to be able to select them, and there's just no other way around it. All right, so Mobile One did have an aviation oil, and I don't know what you guys run in your cars, but in my cars, I uh, I run Mobile One. I love Mobile One, so I'm not saying anything bad about them. I think they're fantastic oil. They're the preferred oil for what Mercedes, BMW, I know Corvette, any high-end car. I think they all want Mobile One full synthetic oil. Synthetic oil is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it doesn't coke. I have all kinds of stuff here. Um, it doesn't produce coke or other deposits. Um, it has a better coefficient of friction. It has reduced wear. It does absolutely a wonderful job. It lasts longer than uh, your mineral oil. So, you know, I don't know what you guys, your car tells you to change your intervals at, but um, I had one Mercedes sedan where the computer actually figured out your driving habits and stuff, and it was usually every 10 to 15,000 miles where I had to change the oil. You know, then I had another SUV Mercedes, and it was just at 10, just didn't matter. Um, as where, like, our Rogue that took regular oil was every three and a half thousand. It was like ridiculous. Little computer, yeah, change the oil. I just did it on the way home. See, I tell you. Um, so, anyway. The problem with Mobile One, or synthetic, we should say just synthetic, it does not do well with leaded gasoline. And we have high lead levels of lead. It doesn't clean out deposits too very well, right? Um, I know that it doesn't suspend and work well with the lead. So it left Mobile One in a big lawsuit. So right there, class action lawsuit demands thousands of, uh, those are Continental Series, engines that use Mobile One be grounded for teardown inspection, overhaul Mobile's expense, we not to panic. This was like a long time ago, I just threw this in here. It's the only Mobile One I could find with a pink background. Um, so it, it just doesn't work with leaded. So when we get rid of leaded gasoline, which could be soon, they already have unleaded gasoline. Um, they're having some problems with it, GAMI, Seems to be doing well, but they just had a big test done with Swift Fuel, who is a competitor for unleaded gasoline in aviation, and they're running them in a fleet of aircraft in University of North Dakota or something. And they came back and said, now we're seeing valve recession, which we'll get into in the next class we talk about fuel. But anyway, so as long as we have leaded fuel, we're not going to have full synthetic. It does not work well. Yeah. So in that case, if you're running uh, like Rotax, which can run uh, mo gas, can you, you can run um, you can run synthetic. As long as you yeah, as long as you're not running hundred low lead. Now we call it hundred low lead, and you'll hear me say hundred low lead. Hundred low lead doesn't mean that it is fuel that has low lead. It is like comparing it to the fuel that had massive amounts of lead. So it went from an unbelievable amount of lead to a more believably high amount of lead. So it is no, in no way, shape, or form to be construed as fuel that has low amounts of lead. It has, ex it has more lead than our leaded car gas ever had. Yeah. The wasp in there, I think that ran on 140. Yeah, it did. So. But and the amount of lead, and we'll get into how much lead was in this stuff before. So anyway, that's what happened with uh, 
synthetic and why it doesn't work. So widely used in turbine engines, uh, does not evaporate or break down easily. Wasn't really aware that any of the oil evap evaporated. Does not uh, evaporate or break down easily. Um, Did I say the cleaning part because like most diesel trucks, I don't know what BMW specs, but most diesels will say to use full uh, non-synthetic. Oils. Yeah, but then take a look at what diesel oil is. Anybody it's ever change the oil on a diesel? It's pitch black. Yeah. yeah. It is pitch black. It gets on anything. It's a permanent stain. It's like venom. It is. Yeah, it's just, it's on you. I don't think you can, it can't get it out of the pores of your skin if it's on concrete. And you spill a little oil on concrete. I've heard people say that if you take a little bit of just gasoline and pour it on the, the, the oil stain and put a little kitty litter on it, I'll pull it right out and stain is gone. I've heard people say. Um, yeah. So, but diesel oil, it doesn't come out of anything. Yeah. Did not produce. Does not produce coke or other deposits. So, we talked about what coke is before, right? Coke is a solid residue remaining when oils undergo severe oxidation and thermal breakdown at extremely high temperatures. The higher the temperature, the harder and blacker and more brittle the residue. So Coke. Coke is a, let me see. We'll say hard, brittle residue. Harder. Yeah, uh, all coking events occur because the temperature and the oil residue time are both higher than the stability fun limitations of oil and use. So let me say again, coking events occur because the temperature and the oil time in contact with that temperature exceed the limits of the oil. So oil can flow past something that's very hot, but the oil doesn't instantly get that hot, which should make sense, right? So as long as the oil doesn't reach that, just like exhaust valves, which are running at 1400 degrees and oil comes across it, it doesn't instantly coke or you couldn't lubricate it. It's if it stays there next to it for long enough time for the oil to reach 575 that the oil cokes. So it's got to flow past it. So um, let me see, coke, we'll do that, coke. Um, coking happens at 300 degrees C or 575, five, I have 572 written this time, but so five, I think I've said 575 before. Full synthetic, oops, that's why. Full synthetic was used briefly, was used briefly in piston engines, in piston engines, but did not perform well, but did not perform well um, and caused excessive uh, cylinder wear. I did hear somebody talk about it's almost too slippery and it doesn't stick to parts well. So the thinner and the slipperier the oil is, the less likely it sticks to a part. Unlike your car, which how long has it been since you ran your car? A couple hours. Yes, when was the last time I ran my airplane engine and I fly a lot? Last week sometime, right? It's been almost a week. So that oil is sliding off the parts as we speak. When I talk to you guys about building up your engines and you're talking about lubricating your oil pump and you're using the 8015 mixture, which is what you're supposed to use and exactly what I would use if I was going to build an engine and walk out to the test stand, some of you aren't going to see your engines again for another, well, nobody's going to see it for a month, a best case scenario, and then some of you aren't going to see it for a month and another six weeks. So we got 10 weeks from now, that oil is just going to run off those gears and they'll be in a residual, but not a lot. 
And so I talked about putting a little grease as an experiment to see if it would help uh, help it like, prime the pump, so to speak. So anyway, there is that that concept. Uh, semi-synthetic. What is semi-synthetic? Semi-synthetic. It's a blend. So you pour a little synthetic in, pour a little mineral oil in. Uh, Semi-synthetic is widely used in recips. So it's Huh? I don't know what that blend is exactly. Does that blend kind of uh, give it more film strength or something like that? Is that why you use that blend? I think, I think it's more just a combination of good properties. That's what I think. Yeah, I think it's just. I, I don't like it because I feel like the, this is my personal opinion. I don't know. If synthetic didn't work, I don't want half my engine to be something that does not work well. Yeah, you, just get, like, you get the good and the good, but you also get the bad. But yet, it's Aeroshell product, and Aeroshell is one of the best oils in the market, and people swear by this stuff. They love it. So, um, so why these and recips? And that is. I'm going to talk a lot about brands because when you're in the business, it's exactly what it is. Uh, Aeroshell 15W50 and Exxon uh, Mobile Aviation Elite Exxon. Aviation Elite. I've never been an Exxon Mobile user. Um, they don't even cross my mind when it comes to oil in aircraft. I'm either a Phillips or an Aeroshell guy. All right, we have a lot of properties. Is it like totally dumping out there? That is. Rain is back. Good. All right, important. Aircraft, engine, lubricating oil properties. One, A, gravity. We gotta talk about the gravity of oil is a numerical value which serves as an index of the weight and measure volume of the product. So gravity is a numerical value which serves as an index, as an index of the weight a measured volume of the product. All right, we talk about, about specific gravity. What is specific gravity? Gravity compared to water? There you go, what kind of water? <laughs> yes, it's sea level <laughs> at the equator. Specific gravity is the weight of a substance when compared to distilled water. So distilled water has a specific gravity, SG, specific gravity. SG stands for specific gravity. Now I don't have to write specific gravity. I can save time and what is the specific gravity of water? One. One. 1.000. Hey, this sounds a lot like uh, batteries. Lecture and weighs 8.328 pounds per gallon. Or one gram per cubic centimeter. 
why you got to throw that out there. Because <laughs> it's one-to-one. One. That metric My, my that. grandpa did, oops, B, did not fight in World War II for you to sit there and use the metric system in this class. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, what else right. am I going to use to measure my bullets? <laughs> yeah, but we also beat the Redcoats in the Revolutionary War, and that's what they used. <laughs> No, Was they it? Used yeah, they used they, I don't know, but for those of you who aren't familiar with history, World War II was not about the metric system. <laughs> That's what they want you to call it. Also, the U.S. didn't want anything to do with World War II. I will say this is the perfect time to get into U.S. history of talking about oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. B. All right. Can't even write a B right now. I'm so upset. Uh, <laughs> Aircraft oil uh, has a specific gravity of about 0 0.9. So which is heavier, oil or water? Water. Okay, so if you put oil and water together, which goes to the top? Oil. 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 And weighs. About 7.5 pounds per gallon. Now, if I had to memorize something, I would definitely memorize this as an aircraft mechanic because you need this information in your head for weight and balance purposes. And that gets very complicated with oil, but having already memorized 7.5 pounds per gallon is a very good thing. So, all right, so now we talked about that, which led us to 7.5 per gallon. And now we will talk about the flash point. Huh? What do you remember? Huh? I remember 7.5, and I've done just fine with myself. Well, that's the norm. That's you might do way better than me. If, <laughs> you might do way better than me if you memorize 7.2, so. Also, it depends on. I don't know about that. I just learned it at 7.5. The fuel can vary by up to a pound depending on what fuel you Does, It's the temperature. Because fuel expands well, and contracts. That's why large aircraft don't have how many gallons of fuel, it's how many pounds of fuel because of this contract. You ever heard that? Yeah. It's like always fill up your car early in the morning when the fuel is cold, you actually get more. So anyway, uh, flash, but that's a good question, but uh, I don't know what to say about the book. It's Saigo 7.5. I don't think you'll ever run into a situation, especially with me, where it's going to be, is it 7.5 or 7.2? I'm going to say 7.5, and probably when you get into weight and balance, I think they're going to use 7.5 as well, because they're older than I am. All right, uh, what is the flash point? Uh, temperature at which an oil must be heated to give off enough vapor to form a combustible mixture above the surface that will momentarily flash or burn when exposed to flame. So you heat the oil up, it's going to give off fumes, it's just enough to flash but not start the oil on fire. So temperature, temperature which an oil must be heated. to give off enough vapor, to give off enough vapor to um, momentarily flash momentarily flash or burn it's both momentary flash or burn when exposed to a flame. So would you want your aircraft oil to have a high or low flash point? High. All right. After the flash point would come the Burn point. Temperature which oil must be heated to give off enough vapor to form a combustible mixture above the surface that the 
that will burn continuously. So can I just put dot, 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 burn continuously? Yes. Burn continuously. And we would want a high burn point. And why is that? Because the oil is not the stuff we want to burn, we want the fuel to burn. Yeah, we don't want oil burning in the crankcase, catching fire. Uh, it's bad enough that it will catch fire once it hits the exhaust. So if you have a connecting rod failure and it punches a hole through the connecting rod and oil starts getting out onto the exhaust, you will have, an, you will have a fire. The oil will burn at that point. So that's a bad, bad, bad thing. That's exactly it. Yes. So like for, uh, first In the coking situation, it's not exposed to an open flame. It's just hot. So there's no ignition source. Yeah, but when you get hot enough, it'll ignite. Anything will ignite when it gets hot enough, without, even without an ignition source. Yeah, auto ignition. It's only in the valve guys that come? Anywhere that gets that hot, but that's the only place on the engine. Oh. It's near the turbocharger. Turbocharger gets way beyond that. So, because it's exhaust driven. So, yeah, it's running at 1400 plus degrees in the turbocharger. And the turbocharger has bearings that have to be pressure lubricated with oil. So, it's running through the turbocharger. So, there too. Turbochargers are, and we'll talk about turbos and exhaust at some point, but they're deadly. I don't want one. Yes. If, so, what happens when the oil goes into the head? and comes down between the valve and the, and the valve guide. Mm -hmm. But eventually, it does it just go into the, uh, into the either into the, in, into the chamber or into the, into the exhaust yeah. and burns? Yeah. So is that an issue? Is that an issue with efficiencies or, or something like that? Or that it's just like kind of known no, that it's... Just, that's why your bellies are dirty. Gotta wipe the belly down. So, yeah, oil's going to come out of the breather. It's going to come out of... Drip into the exhaust guide. If it goes in the intake guide, it's going to go into the combustion chamber. If it goes in the exhaust guide, it's going to go out the uh, out the exhaust. All right, what else we got? Very important one: viscosity. Viscosity is the resistance the oil has to flowing. Resistance the oil has to flowing. So we talk about viscosity. So honey, honey has a high or low viscosity? High. Yeah, high viscosity. And water has a low viscosity. Just to keep everybody kind of on the same page. Hey, what is, what is that stuff? All right, uh, it's the resistance. Um, so, well, high viscosity, um, oil pours very slowly, and low viscosity, oil pours um, faster. Temperature has the greatest effect on viscosity. So when I am doing an oil change on an aircraft engine, especially in the winter, and I bring the aircraft in, especially if it's been run first. And some people say, don't do that. Some people do it. What I do is, assuming I have run the aircraft engine, the first thing I do is start my oil draining, catch an oil sample, 
Open up the box of oil, take out the oil and set it on top of the engine. So the oil warms up, so it pours in faster. You get more out. So break time. <clears throat>